Hey guys, Mr. Fixit here. Today I'm going to show you how to get the trouble codes off of your 84 to 94 Fords. Alright, more specifically, this is my 1990 F-150. It has the 4.9 liter engine in it. And the first thing we need to determine is do we have a check engine light? Okay, so we got the check engine light. This should always come on when you turn the key on. If your check engine light doesn't work for whatever reason, stay tuned, we can still get the codes. We need to jump the pins on this connector to get the trouble codes. Find the EEC test port. Now on my 1990 Ford F-150 with the 4.9 is right here. EEC test right there. And this is what we're looking for. We're going to number these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we're going to take a paper clip and we're going to push the paper clip into terminal two. And then on the side here, we have this gray. We're going to connect this into the gray one. All right, back in the cab, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the key on, but we're not going to start the engine. So this is called the KOEO, -E or Key On Engine Off Test. So when you turn the key on, you're going to see the check engine light come on and then go back off. After that, you're going to hear the fuel pump run for a second. And then the check engine light's going to flicker rapidly. It'll be kind of dim. Then there'll be a pause. After this pause, this is going to be your flashes for the check engine light to give you your codes. You need to count these codes. Okay, here we go. Key on. Check engine light came on, went back off. The fuel pump just ran. Now the flickers. Okay, now we're going to count these flashes. One, two, three. Four, five, six, a six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So 67. Now it's going to pause and it's going to repeat. Six. Sixty-seven. So my only code is 67. Now these first codes, these are active codes. Now there's going to be a pause. And then a the check engine light will blink one more time. And then there will be a pause. Now these are the pending codes. One, two, three, three. One, two, three. So 33. And it's going to repeat. All right, so you guys with manual cars and trucks and you get code 67, what that code basically means is that the clutch safety switch, in order to not get code 67, you push in your clutch. Okay, this next test is going to be the KOER, or Key On Engine Running Test. For this test, we're going to want to make sure that the engine is at operating temperature. The next thing is we're going to start the engine. Then the check engine light is going to flash the engine code. So we're going to get two flashes for a four, three for a six, and four flashes for an eight cylinder. Okay, after these initial flashes, we're going to turn the wheel to the right, turn the wheel to the left, we're going to hit the brake, and then we're going to push in the clutch if we have a manual. If you have an automatic, you push in your overdrive button here. And then the engine's going to rev up, and it's going to change RPMs. This is going to take maybe 30, 40 seconds. What we're waiting for is the check engine light to flash the one time. After this one flash, we're going to mat the throttle quickly. All right, so here we go. Okay, there's our three flashes to indicate my six cylinder. So now I'm going to turn the wheel to the right, I'm going to turn it to the left, I'm going to tap the brake, and I'm going to push in the clutch, and then you would hit your overdrive button here. When performing this test, make sure all the accessories like the air conditioning, heater, and windshield wiper controls are all turned off. The purpose for turning the steering wheel is to check the power steering pressure sensor if it's equipped with one. Pressing the brake checks the brake light switch, and the purpose for the full throttles is to sweep the throttle position sensor through its full range of motion. The computer is gathering data from all the systems like the oxygen sensor, the exhaust gas return sensor, 
the manifold absolute pressure sensor, the throttle position sensor, coolant temperature sensors, air intake temperature sensors, and it's gathering data from the timing curve, checking the operation of the idle air control valve, finding the idle point, checking vacuum solenoids for operation, scanning the secondary air system or smog system for operation. If the computer finds any anomalies, it will generate a code. I was able to simulate some fault codes by disconnecting vacuum lines to the EGR and smog system and not holding in the clutch. If you get code 21, coolant temp sensor not in range, warm up the engine more and repeat this test. Okay, we got that flash, now we're gonna goose it. Now it's gonna start giving us our codes. One, two, three, four, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, 44. Now it's gonna be a pause. Two, three. Okay, that was a three. One, two, three. Okay, 33. So code 44 and 33. Now it's gonna repeat. Okay, so I got codes 44 and 33. Okay, to erase the codes, what you're going to do is while the self-test is going, you're going to leave your key on. Disconnect this. That way erase the codes. Okay, if your check engine light doesn't work for whatever reason, we can still get the codes using a multimeter. You can also do this with a test light. So what I've got here is I've got the negative or the black probe from the multimeter and I've got it in pin number four. So if we count again, one, two, three, four. And then the other side is connected way over there to the positive side of the battery. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the key on and we're gonna watch the numbers flash on the DMM. Okay, so I'm gonna go turn the key on. You're gonna see the numbers flicker for that first initial flash, and then you're gonna see them flicker again for that real rapid succession of flashes. And after that, we're gonna start counting the number changes here. Okay, there's that rapid. Yeah, so that's passed. Now we're gonna start counting these flashes. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that was six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's that 67 code I said when we, you have a clutch. And it's going to repeat. Now it's going to give us the other series of codes. One, two, three, one, two, three, 33. Now if you're doing this with a test light, the test light will just flash. Okay, another test we can use this connector for is if we move the pin one, two, three, four, five, six, and we jump this with a jumper wire. And we go to ground. So I'm just gonna use my brake line here for ground. With the key on, what this is going to do is it's going to run the fuel pump. So if you're having fuel pump problems, then this is a way you can run the fuel pump. I'll post a picture up of the pin layout of this, what all these mean. So we basically got the, the data link connector negative here. Then we've got the output for the EEC and then on number three here, that's the positive for the EEC test equipment. Okay, pin number four here, that's the check engine light output right there. And then this over here is the fuel pump relay. Okay, once you've gotten all your codes off of your ECU and you've replaced parts and you still have the codes, what you can do to reset all your tr trouble codes, you can take a jumper wire. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate this, I'm just going to explain it. 
disconnect your negative cable. Make sure it's not touching any ground. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your jumper wire and you're going to jump the negative to the positive with the negative disconnected. You're going to let that sit for 10-15 minutes and that's going to reset the EEC. Once you've reset the EEC, it's going to have to relearn. First thing you're going to do is you're going to start the engine and if you have AC working, you're going to turn your AC on. This will tell the idle air control valve to take over when you turn the AC on and off. After that, you're going to want to drive the vehicle. It's going to take uh, several miles to go through all the drive cycles. It's going to relearn all the fuel trims. And if it's an automatic, it's going to relearn the shift points. All right, well, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope this helped you out. I know it took me a while to figure out all this stuff. There's plenty of information out there on YouTube, but they don't explain the whole story. So there's other things you can do with that connector, and you can also get your check engine light codes off there, even if your check engine light doesn't work. So thanks for watching.